So apparently Ethereum's about to self-destruct and I wanted to make this video to explain exactly what's gonna happen because when I read this headline, uh, my heart sank and I thought to myself, I'm gonna lose 1% of my net worth. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm not meet Kevin. I have met Kevin though and he's awesome. So let me just be transparent with you for a moment because I started to make more money this year with YouTube and so I understandably started to take more risks with my investing. So a small-ish part of my net worth, I invested into cryptocurrency and it turned into a relatively large-ish part of my net worth. So I took $100,000 and I spread it between Bitcoin and Ethereum about 80-20% and that $100,000 is now worth today something like $820,000 which let me just be real here because I know everyone on the internet is a multi-millionaire, but this to me is a ton of money because that is way more money than I've ever made in my entire working career. And it would be a shame if I lost 120 Ethereums because if I sold them today, they'd be worth something like $230,000. I would cry because that's enough to buy a house. Now, I wanted to tell you all that up front, not to show off or anything like that, but to tell you that obviously I have a lot of money invested and I'm biased and I love cryptocurrency and obviously this self-destruct situation has me worried. So I wanted to make this video to explain exactly what's going on. So let's talk about it. All right, so this is how the Ethereum network self-destruct feature works. Imagine a countdown with a deck of cards. Five, four, three, two, one, let's begin. Hi, my name is Andre Jack. Hope you're doing well. Come for the finance and stay for the This became a crypto channel comments. <laughs> I promise I'm not a crypto channel, but I do want to talk more about crypto this year, especially because it is still very relevant and still very dangerous. And I want to make sure to protect people's best interests, but also because the crypto space has the highest CPM rates I've ever seen, which is awesome because I get to make more money, but unfortunate because I have to spend it all on my dog, who is the pickiest eater I've ever seen. I put Rito on a human food grade diet that is so ridiculously expensive, so I hate him. <laughs> I don't recommend a chihuahua. So anyway, beside the point, let's talk about self-destruct and then how it's gonna be used and then what it's gonna mean for Ethereum's price in the future because there's some good implications and there's some bad ones. So let's just start with self-destruct. What is it? So it's a feature that the Ethereum developers put inside of smart contracts in order to be able to upgrade what are called DAOs, these decentralized autonomous organizations, which is just a fancy word for saying a decentralized business platform that can run by itself without the input from its creators. And when you upgrade the smart contract from the old to the new, you have to destroy the old smart contract. Now, there's a few other ways that this self-destruct feature is used that I'll talk about later in the video, but understand that Ethereum is run on a programming language called Solidity. And once a developer writes this smart contract, they lose the ability to change anything about it as soon as they launch it and make it public. Because once they do, it becomes distributed and it becomes decentralized. And it's one of the reasons why we love cryptocurrency. That's the trade-off is because then nobody owns it. And that is awesome. It's one of the reasons why this crypto cat is so valuable because it is provably verifiably rare, AKA the developers can't go in and change this smart contract. But another reason why it's valuable is because people just have nothing better to do with their money. But that's beside the point. I'm not judging because I did spend way too much money on a piece of paper called the Charizard. So, I'm not judging. But when it comes to decentralization, that comes at the expense of network security because there's always a flaw in the system waiting to be exploited. And once it happens, I can't go in and change the code. Like if I'm a private database, like a bank or a credit card where I can just go in and get rid of an attacker. That cannot happen on a decentralized platform like Ethereum. And that's sort of where this self-destruct feature comes in. The idea behind it is that if an attacker gets access to a smart contract or a DAO, that the programmers would be able to go in and just self-destruct and then reduce any damage done to people's money that is locked inside of the smart contract. It's sort of like the equivalent of the eject button on an airplane. And it's also sometimes called burning tokens. And you know what that means? Obligatory visual analogy that no one asked for. Burning tokens in my wallet. So perfect. <sighs> no, it's not overused. 
Now in this case, Ethereum is not using self-destruct to self-destruct and protect itself from attackers, so I don't wanna scare anyone. Instead, it's using self-destruct to destroy its own coins, and here's why it's doing that. All right, this is about to get really complicated, but bear with me, I'll try to keep it really simple. So Ethereum wants to change the way that it handles and processes its transactions, because in Ethereum 1.0, which is what I have right here, we use a concept called proof of work to secure the network and transact with. So anytime I wanna send money to my wallet or I wanna send it to you, then I have to pay miners what are called gas fees in order to do what I want them to do. And in return, they secure our network and they make Ethereum safe to use. But in this next upgrade, which is called EIP 1559, we wanna change what's called the consensus model, which is just a fancy phrase for describing a framework for how something works that we all agree on. So we're gonna change it from a proof of work to a proof of stake consensus model. So now, instead of paying the miners the fees to do the stuff we want, those fees are going to be paid to the network itself. And a portion of those fees are then going to be self-destructed or burned out of existence forever. That's the technical explanation of what's gonna happen. And now let's talk about the fun part as far as why it's gonna self-destruct and what's gonna happen to the price. So for starters, it's gonna start to compete with Bitcoin on a level that I didn't think it would anytime soon because here's the thing. At the beginning of this year in January, we had something like 114,078,000 Ethereum coins in existence. Now today, that number is closer to like 115,039,000 coins. What does that mean? That means we've digitally printed something like a million coins in just the last two and a half months. That means the price of Ethereum has been kept somewhat stable and in check, and it hasn't been increasing in value quite as much as Bitcoin because it has no theoretical limit to how many Ethereums can exist, unlike Bitcoin, which obviously has a maximum supply of 21 million. And so this upgrade could mean that it could transform Ethereum from an inflationary currency to one that looks a little bit more like a deflationary currency, or at least one that has more control over its inflation because of self-destruct. But what is self-destruct? Originally, it was an attack from a Pokemon called Gollum, which was like this rock-shaped circle thing, and anytime it used it, it would be basically game over. So when I read Self-Destruct, I kind of panicked because I've been scarred since Pokemon Blue version, but that's beside the point. The fact that Ethereum is going to self-destruct should mean that our investments within Ethereum should hypothetically increase in value by a lot. So let me tie everything together and make sense of why this is gonna happen. Like I've said at the beginning of this video, I have a huge reason personally not to say anything badly about Bitcoin and not necessarily promote any other crypto because that would obviously affect my investment portfolio, but I'm gonna be truthful and objective as possible because that's the premise I've set myself since I've started my YouTube channel. So here it goes. I still love Bitcoin the most, objectively. I mean, I'm not biased or anything, right? <laughs> that, that's because I can understand it the best. All it wants to do is to be a store of value and it doesn't promise anything more than that. It is digital gold, but if Bitcoin is digital gold and we always compare Bitcoin to gold's market cap of $10 trillion, then it stands to reason that we compare Ethereum's market cap to something that is way bigger than gold. Something like M1 or even M2, the global monetary currency supply and circulation, which is many, many trillions of dollars more than gold's market cap. But at the very least, it can also be, I guess, compared to gold's market cap too. This is why I've said so many times that Ethereum has more potential in terms of multiplying its price from today's levels. Because when people buy Bitcoin, they buy it and then they hodl it, right? They actually hold on to it, they don't really use it. I mean, yes, some people use it, but for the most part, they just use it as a hedge against the real inflation. <laughs> I say that in air quotes because just recently the central banks have told us that the personal expense consumption inflation rate is something like one 1.5% and the core inflation is at roughly 1.3%, which I'm not sure how to believe that considering that Bitcoin has exploded over several hundred percent in price and other asset classes have also grown insanely high. So, okay, let's go with that though. Ethereum's strength is the fact that people are using it. It is the most useful blockchain in the world today. People are using it to build dApps, these decentralized apps, these DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations, these digitized pieces of artwork called NFTs, decentralized finance, DeFi. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. 
on. People are using it, so it's more than just a proof of concept. It works today, which means in the future, Ethereum's velocity of money, the rate at which we exchange money, is going to be a lot higher than Bitcoin's. And so when the network upgrades, Here's what I think will happen. The rate at which we create Ethereum coins could be outweighed by the rate with which we self-destruct or burn them out of the system. And so we could create a reality where there's more demand than we are creating. And this isn't just a hypothetical example because just last month in February, the transaction fees spiked and they were higher than the block reward for miners some days. And so you can have this potential example where there's more demand to build businesses and use the Ethereum network than we're actually creating tokens to be used in the first place. And this obviously drives the price higher because it creates this basic supply and demand economic structure that exists in Bitcoin that doesn't really exist in Ethereum today, even though it's worth roughly $2,000 still. There was a really interesting point brought up by Vitalik Buterin, who's the creator of Ethereum, who said this. He said, the reason people love Bitcoin and the reason it goes up in value is because it goes up in value and people buy more Bitcoin. And the blockchain aspect of Bitcoin is just a byproduct of its existence. In other words, it's just there to secure the network, but that's not the point of Bitcoin. And so Ethereum's approach is completely the opposite in that blockchain is the end result. And Ethereum is nothing more than the asset that gets used on top of the blockchain. And it's only increasing in value because it is a byproduct of the blockchain doing its job successfully, which is to build decentralized platforms and businesses on top of. And I thought that was super interesting. And I'm not saying that one approach is better than the other because let's face it, Pokemon cards still have a ton of value, even though no one's using their base set Charizard cards to duel with. Yu-Gi-Oh reference, people are just collecting them and they're still appreciating a ton in value. But Ethereum's approach is completely the opposite, which is why I hold both tokens because I think both can coexist peacefully and successfully. But when Ethereum upgrades the network soon, there are a few problems that it's going to encounter with this self-destruct feature that you definitely need to know about. When it comes time to upgrade the network, which will happen sometime in either July or August, we could see what's called a chain split. Now a chain split happens when a coin forks into two Two different versions and this usually happens when a group of people feel marginalized and left out of some deal and that would be the miners because think about it right now in ethereum 1.0 the miners use their computers to secure the network and get paid fees but what if in the future somebody was to tell you thanks for all you've done you're fired, <laughs> we don't need you anymore. You'd probably be upset and you might rebel. So on April 1st, allegedly, a bunch of miners are gonna try to get together to get a 51% majority. Now, if that happens, the miners then become Neo. They can do whatever they want to the network. They can attack it, they can create more coins, they can double spend, they can do anything, and that's really bad for the network. But the likelihood of this happening is probably gonna be zero. The reason why Ethereum is going to be safe is because miners have very little incentive to attack the network that's making them rich. It's all part of the game theory that makes crypto so brilliant because why bite the hand that feeds you? Why destroy the golden goose that lays the golden eggs? You just wouldn't. The real reason they're getting together is just to prove a point that, hey, if economic incentives don't align, then we could potentially fracture the network and that's not something anybody wants. But honestly, that's part of the fun of being a crypto investor. You just never know what apocalyptic event is right around the corner to destroy all of your coins. <laughs> so I do think that if Ethereum manages to upgrade the network successfully, we're gonna see the beginning of the biggest bull run of 2021. That's when the price is really going to increase. I'm betting money on it. No, literally, I'm betting a lot of money on it, over $220,000, so I'm really hoping it goes well. In the meantime, don't forget to grab up to $250 worth of free Bitcoin on BlockFi using this BlockFi link right here, blockfi.com forward slash Andre. And when you do, go get two free stocks with Webull. By depositing $100, you'll get two free stocks, each of which can be worth up to $1,850 using the link down below. And when you get those two free stocks, don't forget to track them automatically with the spreadsheet link down below on my Patreon. Love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you back here on Monday and Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. You can follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. And don't forget, sometimes I sound like a salesman. So uh, go subscribe to Millennial Money. It's my friends, Jeremy, Kevin, Graham, and I, who post on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific. We talk about everything money-related and investing. Anyway, love you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.